Welcome back to Body Talk with Bex. This week, I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with Jerlene Taylor. She is a model who just so happens to have two ostomy bags. And it was really wonderful getting to talk to her and hear about her experiences. So let's just jump right on into this one. So I did a little bit of research, not a ton. Okay. I did a okay. little bit of research. <laughs> Why don't we just start at the beginning? Okay. So what were you feeling symptoms? Was there well, a well, you know, I, I was I was very young. Yeah. When I, when I was actually my diagnosis. So I was just three years old. And oh yeah, I was just three. And ironically, just in, in a backyard, in our backyard. And my oldest sister just came out to check on us. And she noticed that there was blood in my clothes. And it wasn't like a scrape of the knee. <laughs> Let's go in the house, put a Band-Aid on it, and it's okay. But no, it was it was a lot of blood coming from a certain area. And of course, you know, my sister rushed me in the house to my parents. And of course, they immediately rushed me to the hospital, our local hospital, and um, days of testings and MRIs, x-rays, you name it. I had everything done. And just to discover um, days later, I was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer called rhabdomyosarcoma. And it's a um, tumor that starts in your, your soft tissue. So it can be anywhere, really, in your body, your neck, your head, your, your joints, your bones. And I actually had, actually, I had vaginal cancer. And so, yeah, so those were the tumors were. Again, I was just three years old and, you know, bleeding in the backyard. And it was, though, as if I had a, a menstrual. And so that was the first, you know, discovery, you know, of course, again, you know, parents rushed me to the hospital and those tests came up that I had vaginal cancer. Again, very rare, rare form. It's called rhabdomyosarcoma. Again, it is a tumor in your soft tissue, but of course, very, very scary for my parents because at the time, like the doctors didn't even think that I was going to survive. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, they did not think I was going to survive. And my my parents, they were Christians. They're not living now, but they were Christians. And of course they prayed and they also seeked out other options and other, you know, hospitals. And even mm-hmm. the hospital suggested other locations that specialize in my type of cancer. Because back back then, <laughs> at the time, that particular hospital didn't specialize in the type of rare cancer that I had. So from the age of three to about 11 years old, my home away from home was in New York, New York City at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. So that's where I had my treatments, my surgeries. But the blessed thing about it, you know, I know I was young when I was diagnosed, but a year After my diagnosis and treatments, I had chemo and radiation. I was actually cancer free and the cancer never came back, even till this day and good health. I mean, of course, other surgeries along the way, but a year after my treatments and diagnosis, I was actually cancer free. But because of where the tumors were located in my body, a lot of that um, area was damaged, uh, vaginal area, urinary tract area. And so what it did was it was caused me to give me a better actually kind of really saved my life and give me just better living. I was had to have ostomy surgery. And, you know, people's like, well, what is, you know, what is ostomy surgery? You know, it's a surgically opening in your body for the discharge of your, either your bowels or your bladder. And so I had to have ostomy surgery, really, like I said, to kind of help save my life and uh, give me better quality of life. And so my parents decided that, 
yes, let's go ahead and do the ostomy surgery, which ostomy surgery does, uh, you know, it, it. you have to wear ostomy bags in order for the waste to empty out into. So nothing <laughs> functions. Um, <laughs> everything was kind of diverted and, you know, uh, surgery opening and, you know, and so which again caused me to have, you know, ostomy bags since, um, since the age of three years old. Oh, wow. So, you know, just imagine being that young. Of course, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't understand anything back then. You know, I was young. I was just three. But growing up, you know, your parents, you know, just wonder, hey, how are we going to explain, you know, you haven't, you had ostomy surgery, you got to wear ostomy bags for your, the rest of your life, you know. You you adapt, you do, because I was so young, I did adapt, but at the same time, of course, I got to grow up, you know, and I have to understand, you know, what happened to me and what's going on with my body and why do I have these bags on my stomach, you know, not one, but two, you know, and so... It was it was pretty rough, you know, being a little girl, you know, and just wondering, hey, you know, what what is my life going to be like? Will I adapt in school? Will I make friends? Will, you know, of course, it comes along with just medical complications and this surgery and that surgery to fix this and correct that. But again, you, you go back to having ostomy bags for the rest of your life and just wonder, what is your life going to be like? Are you going to be able to do and be and have dreams and aspirations? And will they stop me? You know, those are the questions that as I was growing up, you know, like a little girl and especially becoming a teenager, you know, and just adapting your body changing and (laughs) you You already have those hormones going crazy. You already got that going on, you know, and then like, to deal with those circumstances, you know, you just wonder what will your life be like, you know, and, I, you know, I struggled a lot. I hit a lot of my feelings, a lot of my emotions, because back then as a child, I was so shy, even back in, I remember back in, you know, the hospital, getting I was so quiet, you know, of course, my parents was my mouthpiece, but those feelings, you know, they came out later in life. <laughs> And I can say uh, an emotional roller coaster, but still my parents just tried to give me like a normal life. Yes, I was sick. There was other siblings at home. There was five other siblings at home. Wow. Several big family. <laughs> yeah. And I have, I have a twin sister, so I'm a twin. And so, you know, my parents had the, you know, attention to them, but especially attention to me, you know, driving back and forth, you know, from where I live in Baltimore, Maryland to New York, you know, just traveling up and down the road and my dad working two jobs and my mom mm-hmm. with me, you know, at the hospital. So it was, I would say it quite a journey, you know, but, you know, I say now it's a journey that I honestly would not change if I could. I would not change it if I could, even along with the ups and the downs and the challenges and, you know, going through low self-esteem and not loving myself and wondering what my life is going to be, you know, still, I would not change my journey just because it, you know, I, I am who I am because for one, my faith, I believe in God, but because uh, my journey taught me so much, you know, yeah. e- even growing up, <laughs> Yeah, I, I look back now and, you know, I remember and, you know, just being in school and kids teasing me and not understanding. They don't even know, well, let alone what an ostomy is and why do I have ostomy? Like they don't know, they don't understand. And back then I was still shy. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't. So I couldn't explain to them, you know, and so you go through those changes, you know, with your peers and you just wonder, Hey, you know, why even have friends, that will understand, you know, about my circumstances and will they just accept me? You know what I mean? And I mean, those are just the the emotions and the feelings that you go through dealing with medical circumstances and situations. And I know, you know, probably like yourself too, growing up and dealing with a sickness. And, you know, a lot of people call like an invisible sickness because they can't see, they can't see my bags, you know, but at the same time, you know what you're dealing with personally. And so, you know, I did struggle for, for, for a little while until I just understood that, you know, Rebecca, life happens. 
and yeah. <laughs> we can't predict or we don't know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. It's just, it's called life. Right. And I had to understand like nobody was to blame, you know, for my cancer and a lot of, you know, uh, sicknesses. Sometimes it is hereditary and things like that, but nobody's to blame. It just, it happened. <laughs> it yeah. happened to me. <laughs> but you, you learn how to deal with it in your, your own way. You know, you, you know, maybe reach out to support groups or your family or whatever your faith is or whatever you might believe in. But no, those are the things that I did to kind of help me get through, you know, certain periods in my life. <laughs> yeah. And so again, it's, you know, it's been a journey, it's still a journey. We're all on a journey, <laughs> a journey called life and things happen in our journey. And I think it's all how we deal with it. You know, how do you deal with unforeseen circumstances that come about in our life? How do we deal with it? And, but how do you use it too? Yeah. You know, how, how do you use it to, for one, help yourself, but how do you use those circumstances maybe to help other people? And I believe I didn't, you know, discover all this until probably I was like an adult, because even as a teenager, I still didn't talk about it. It was like my secret. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> anyone, want anyone to know until my, my mom told me one day, Geraldine, you're going to have to, you have to t- tell your story. You're going to have to share. And I was you know, sometimes when you're young and your parents say something, you like, it goes in one ear and out the other. And so I couldn't understand back then why she wanted me to share, but she knew. But I had to discover for myself. You know, I had to discover why does my story and my journey make a difference? Why? And oftentimes we don't discover that until later. Sometimes yeah. early, but I discover it until later why why my story is important and my journey is important especially to others that's struggling in whatever sickness it may be it could be cancer or your new ostomate or you know you've had your ostomy for a long time and you're having some struggles you discover that you can make a difference and and, and I, I did discover that I could make a difference by sharing for one you know I've had my ostomy since I was three, I'll be 55 at the end of the year. And so it's no been, way. Yeah. <laughs> you do not look that old. <laughs> yeah. So that's over 50 years, you know, with, you know, having, you know, ostomies and just kind of dealing with it on, again, so many levels. But how can I, again, use my journey to help somebody else. And the ostomy community is, is very, very important to me. I am an um, advocate in the ostomy community. And just showing others, again, that you can do, you can be, you can have those dreams, you can have aspirations, you can get back to your hobbies, you know, you can just still live with an ostomy. And so that's like my mission right now. My mission and my purpose is, you know, I say it all the time. It's been my motto for over a year now that I'm different to make a difference. And so I believe we all are. (laughs) We're all different in so many different ways, whether it's through your sickness or whatever it may be, whether your lifestyle, whatever it may be. But we're all different and, and, and we can make a difference just how, how do I make a difference? What do, you know, how? And for me, it was, it's just sharing, sharing my, sharing my journey. I say as an overcomer, sharing my journey as a survivor (laughs) and just sharing it in so many different ways, you know? And so, uh, again, I, I would not change anything about my journey. I would not change it at all. Again, it has allowed me to be the person that I am today. And listen, I still have challenges and struggles. <laughs> um, you do with an ostomy, but I think I just I handle it different now because we can have incidents and accidents. You know, I, I remember having a big accident when I was in middle school and that just devastated me. I thought it was the end of everything, you know, and I mean, I got over it. <laughs> it took a long time, but now I just handle things just different. You know, and yeah, so I'm happy to, you know, now share my story with the world. You know, I've traveled a lot just sharing and been in the media. And of course, I'm on social media, (laughs) but but that's a way 
that that I can share and that's a way that I can touch other people and you know especially again the Austin community because it's nothing like walking in each other's shoes because we understand you know we can share we can talk about things that happen to us and you know we just talk about everything which is great and I'm just happy to I'm happy to be that voice you know because I believe everybody voice matters right and it matters in so many different ways and how we can matter to other people, but we have to, we have to talk. We have to be that voice. And, you know, I'm the voice for other optimists that maybe is not comfortable sharing. A lot of people are not, and that's fine. You know, I didn't share until I was an adult, (laughs) you know, and, you know, it's all about your comfortability. And again, I'm glad to be, be that voice for them. You know, and maybe that can help them slowly, you know, share their journey if they want to, you know, but I just believe by me sharing and, and, and telling my story that it's it's making a difference some way, shape or form. You know, it's it's making a difference. And I'm just happy about it. I'm happy with me. I'm happy in my body. <laughs> whether it's two bags or one bag or you know but I'm, I'm happy with my body you know I'm happy with my flaws and my scars <laughs> and these two ostomy bags <laughs> so but I, you know I know I remember I couldn't say that at one time yeah. um, you know but it's you know it's a blessing you know it's a blessing and I believe personally it's a it's a blessing with with my journey and just you know it's it's I don't know. It just it just humbles me and of the outpour of support and the outpour of people just wanting to get to know you more and know your journey and see how I can help them. And But at the same time, they inspire me, too. You know, there's such awesome estimates out there. <laughs> they really, really are. And I'm inspired by them. They're inspired by my, by my story. I'm inspired by their journey, too. Whether you didn't have your ostomy one day or or 20 years or 10 years, you know, I'm in, inspired by them as well. So platforms like this is needed. And I'm happy that you do have this. I listened to a few of the other stories. <laughs> like I said, you know, they that inspires me too, because it just gives me that push and it just it just reminds me, Geraldine, you're 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 on this the right, you're on the right journey, you know, again by listening to the other stories and just, you know, they're overcomers, they're survivors, and they've been through a lot and they survived and now they're sharing. And so, again, that pushes me to keep on sharing. I tell people that one time I wouldn't talk about it. And now it's like, um, I can't stop and won't stop (laughs) (laughs) sharing my story. But, you know, it's for a purpose and hopefully that it can it can help somebody else. And I believe it, it has. And it, 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 it has helped a lot of people. And again, whether I touch one person or 100, per, 100 people or 1,000, it's all for the good. And hopefully I can, and slowly they, they, can, they can share their, their journey because it, it, it matters. Everybody, everybody's journey and everybody's story does matter. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Um, so, okay. So you, I mean, first of all, it's amazing that it went away. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing right there. Yeah. Yeah. So you had radiation and chemo. Yes. (gasps) Yes. That's hard. They didn't have to do any surgeries to remove any tumors or anything. Um, they did. As a matter of fact, did. I did surgery. I had surgery plus, <laughs> chemo plus. and radiation. Oh, that's yeah. so hard on a growing body. <laughs> I know. Yes, it really, really is. And you know, I was so young. <laughs> I was so young. So everything you just said, I had it done. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And then you had your ostomies since you yes. were three. Yes. And you were yes. still seeing those doctors until you were 11? 11, right. And then after that, I could really go back home and stay home because then I would follow up with other specialists here in, in, in Maryland, in Baltimore, the city I'm, I'm from. And so I was able to follow up and I probably had that same doctor <laughs> since then. So, yeah, so I was able to finally just go back home. 
And um, which was great because, again, you know, my dad, he worked two jobs. And then in between time, you know, he would come up to New York with me and my mom you know, and, you know, spend some time there, then go back home with the rest of my siblings. So, you know, I'm thankful for both my parents, their sacrifices. And of course, their support and their prayers and, you know, just just great parents. Yeah. And so you were in New York those years to just keep an eye on things or were there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because, um, you know, along with my treatments and then, you know, getting my ostomies, of course, you know, you, you know, you just have to, you know, keep an eye on things so for one, make sure like the cancer didn't come back. Mm-hmm. And I, I really, I had more surgeries after because I was so young with getting my ostomies. Of course, I'm growing up. And right. then I had to, well, not, so many surgeries, but particularly a few surgeries, like I had to go back and get a revision because my I'm growing. Right. And so I'm not a baby three years old anymore. And so I had to go back for revisions and, and things like that. So that's why I was there like so many years after my treatments and a few surgeries. And I was able to go home and stay home a little bit longer. But then I have to go back. You know, you got to do tests after so many months just to make sure, you know, there's no tumors. And so right. those years, that's what it was, just kind of back and forth. Like you said, keeping an eye on things, making sure that the cancer didn't come back, surgeries more for revisions and things like that. Wow. And were you going to school during all of that? I was actually getting homeschooled for some time. And then when I was actually able to go back home for for some periods, I did go to school, but I wind up, my mom had to take me out to get homeschool because, you know, when you're starting like, let's say kindergarten and first grade, and I'm still kind of getting familiar with my body, my bags, when to change them, how I change them. And I was having like quite a few incidents and accidents in school. And so my mom was like, hey, let's homeschool her. Let's get a nurse to come in, ask to be nurse to come in, kind of show or again, what to do, how to do. In the meantime, you know, had a school tutor until I was like really honestly comfortable, you know, until I was yeah. comfortable enough. And then it's like, oh, okay, going back to school, <laughs> you're going back in. So that was kind of like a struggle for me too, because you're around your peers then and you're making new friends and you don't want any incidents and accidents to happen, you know? And yeah. so I was still kind of quiet in school, kind of stayed to myself. Then I really start, you know, I had friends, but didn't start really getting into activities until like middle school, high school. I did play sports, so which was great. <laughs> Got into sports. And so slowly but surely, I was starting to open up a little bit more and more and more. But yeah. <laughs> That's really cool that you managed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, because for one, I didn't, and one thing that really helped me was my parents just, you know, they knew they had a sick child. Of course we had other siblings, but they knew they had a sick child. But one thing that really, really helped me, I think, is that they just treated me normal. Of course I was sick, but they just gave me a normal childhood. And I think that helped a lot, even with my mom, like even with my twin sister and I, when we were kind of like the same height and we, you know, she dressed us just like normal. She didn't dress me like a person who had two ostomy bags. You know what I mean? Even though that is one of our struggles as an ostomy, what do I wear? How do I wear? How do I cover up my, you know, um, back then I'm thankful that my mom just dressed me normal. And so growing up, I guess that's probably why I love clothes now, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but they tried to give me just a normal life and uh, that helped me. But of course, you know, I had personal struggles Yeah, along the way, you know, my own personal struggles, but yeah, I'm, I'm thankful that they just try to make my life normal as possible. Yeah. So what kind of sports did you play? Oh my gosh. I play I played two sports and I played them all four years in, in high school. I played badminton, but then I also played volleyball. But I'm telling you, Rebecca, my sister, my oldest sister, like she would come to my games and you know, oh my gosh, she probably had a fit. You know, you know, you gotta dive, you gotta dig for the ball, you gotta sometimes you might end up on the floor and I Yeah. So embarrassed because she just thought, she was like, oh no, don't fall on your stomach, don't <laughs> <laughs> overprotective of her oh baby sister. God. Yes. 
And so, but I'm really glad that I, I did start playing sports because I think what it did was it just, it kind of took the, con- it took the attention off of me having an ostomy and wearing ostomy bags to something that I enjoyed. Yeah. You know, I didn't want my ostomies to be, oh my gosh, the whole focus of my life. That's why I wanted to I play sports, you know, and then later, later on in life, I got into modeling and I just wanted to take the focus off of my eyes me and started enjoying life. I would say or start enjoying the things that you like, because I tell people all the time I'm, I, I am more. I am more than my ostomies. Of course, they're there. They're not going anywhere. People have asked me, sometimes they can be reversed. Mine was, I didn't have an option, but I wanted to focus on other things and activities in life, you know? And so playing sports in um, high school, I think that really kind of started things. And it just, you know, and it also helped build my um, self-esteem because, you know, in middle school, I just wasn't, oh, you know, I don't want these bags anymore. <laughs> Doing activities, it, it did. It put a, it gave me a boost in my self-esteem because it's like, okay, girl, you can do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, and I did, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. I think everyone needs something like that. <laughs> yeah. Something to show them. Mm-hmm. That they yeah. can, yeah, they can be something that just happens to have an ostomy. Right. But yes. that's not your identity. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, again, I'm, I'm, my mom used to always tell me, and I always remember that Germany, you know, she always says to me, Germany, you're not defined by your ostomy bag. Again, you'll be able to do things in life and, you know, whatever you want to do, you can do. But just know that you're not defined by that. That doesn't... It doesn't make you who you are, per se. You know, they are a part of you, but you're more than that. Yeah. You know? And again, my mom was a great, you know, inspiration and I'll say motivation. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely was a great motivation for me. Amazing. I do want to know, because I think it would be really great just for people out there who maybe mm-hmm. don't have ostomies to just right. understand a little bit. Some of the things that you have to think about on a daily basis that maybe are more routine for you. Yeah. So, so like, how would you care for your ostomy bags? And Yes. So the, the, the most important thing, again, there's three types of, of ostomy. So there's an ileostomy, colostomy, and urostomy. And some people just only have one. So I do not have two. And I think the main thing is with us for a while, say for me personally, maintaining my ostomy is really just making sure they're changed. There's so many different ostomy products out there and supplies. It's so, so many. And I think you have to, and I tell people often too, when I talk to other ostomists, it's just finding the right products or supplies that's conducive to your ostomy. And so once I found the right products, it's just a matter of just keeping your bags changed when they need to be changed. And for me, keeping my bags drained. So I need to change them and drain them because <laughs> have two. I have a colostomy, which is for my bowels. And then I have a urostomy, which is for my bladder. So the most important thing, honestly, really is just keeping them changed when they're supposed to be changed. Like really, you know, I, I work, I work, I work nine, I'm, I have a nine to five job. And so the, the important things are for me. And I tell people often too, like everywhere I go, I, I have a, a supply bag, whether it's at my parents' house, my best friend's house, you know, I just, in, in my car at work, you know, just keeping, making sure you have your, sub, your supplies with you wherever you go, because you just don't know. All the important things about having an ostomy is like your diet, because there's certain things that we can't eat. <laughs> that we should be more cautious. I know definitely for me personally, I have to stay away from spicy foods. A lot of times we have to stay away from leafy leafy things like greens and things like that. You know, we have to watch what we eat. And some, a lot of like foods is kind of like trial and error at first. You know, it was for me, oh, I tried that. No, can't have that anymore. Oh, let me try this. Can't have that anymore. But there are certain things that we should watch out for for as far as our diet is concerned. You can exercise with an ostomy. You know, if you, I know one of my good, good friends, he's a runner. 
you know, and so he's still able to, he got back to running again. And it's just with modification, you know, it depends on your situation with your ostomy. You can exercise. That's something good that you can do. You can still have a career with your ostomy. So my, my actually just my daily routine and probably pretty much with all ostomies is just making sure you maintain it. Make sure it's, again, make sure it's changed when it needs to be changed. And if you have any problems or anything like that, because we do, we do have some problems or a lot of us have other health conditions, right? Mine was cancer. Somebody else might be IBD or Crohn's or colitis or whatever it may be. So we have to keep an eye on that (laughs) along with, so it's good to keep up with anything, you know, concerning your health, you know, that I may your ostomy. So, you know, keeping up with your doctor, keeping your appointments. If you have other medications that you need to take, make sure you're taking your other medications. Whether you've had your ostomy for a short period of time, a long period of time, you do, you learn, you you do. And as people say, you learn as you go. Yeah, you do learn as you go. There's an organization called the United Ostomy Association of America. Listen, this this organization, they've been around for a long, long time, but this organization is everything ostomy. So if you go on their website, and I do refer a lot of people to the UOAA website, United Ostomy Association of America, but they have everything you want to know about ostomy. I mean, everything. There's so much information on their website. They even have like support groups. Support groups are very, very important to us. And so they even have like any support groups that may be in your area that you can visit, that you can attend. Again, support groups are very important in the OSME community. So this particular organization has so much information. I would refer any ostomy there, whether you you, you know you're going to get an ostomy or whether you're having surgery, ostomy surgery, after ostomy surgery. <laughs> so that's an important resource. You said it's United Ostomy Association Social of America. Of America dot org. Yes. So it's dot ostomy.org that's their website and for sure if like if you google you can put in uoaa and it'll pop right up but it's www.ostomy.org awesome yeah and so matter of fact i was just on saturday they had a symposium on saturday which was really really great via virtual but i'm telling you it's just so much information on it to help a person, their ostomy journey. I mean, you could just probably be on their website for hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a great, great resource. And there's other resources out there too. But I, I just know that particular one was very, very helpful to me and still is, still is. And so, yeah, resources are very, very important to us and support groups are very, very important as well. <laughs> yeah. For anyone listening who's interested, this I will link this in the show notes. Okay. So okay, awesome. That would be yeah. great. That <laughs> that's why great. I stopped you to ask. <laughs> yeah, that's fine because I I go on their website every now and because they always have a new new stuff on there, even different like ostomy supply companies and you know so nice. again yeah so it's so much information on there that is really really helpful really really helpful and so during the pandemic was there any difficulty getting the supplies that you needed I know for me no because again there's different ostomy companies out there and I know for me personally I did not have any problems because actually my local pharmacy who I've been with since I was Oh my gosh, since I was little, it was like a mom and pops um, <laughs> pharmacy, but they've grown so much, but I've, all, I've never, I've never had any problems with getting supplies and oh, I maybe, yeah. For, <laughs> yeah, maybe for others during a pandemic, cause you know, with the, the shipping, yeah, and the delay, shipment delays, supplies, delays and things like, things like that. I know a few ostomates went through some, some situations like that and, mm. Oftentimes, you know, you know, we tell people, hey, maybe get in contact with your ostomy nurse 
and see if maybe they can give you some supplies to hold you over. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you can even go to your local hospital and try that as well. You know, so things yeah. like happened during the pandemic, which was, you know, difficult for everybody. Yeah. All around. So, yeah. Yeah. And have you seen a difference in equipment over the years? Because, I mean, you've been using ostomies uh-huh. for a long time. Oh. Have- Oh Has it stayed God. the same that whole time or? Oh, definitely, definitely not. I'm going to tell you probably, Rebecca, every day, that's probably like a new product coming out. <laughs> whether it's, you know, <laughs> like whether it's your bags, whether it's like different types of, of accessories. I mean, it has, of course, back then, oh my gosh, <laughs> it has changed so, so much. And uh, like I said, now every day, that's always something new. And they even have like accessories. And when I say accessories, I'm talking about people want to like, per se, hide or disguise their ostomies. Like they have ostomy wraps where you can just put, just like a wrap, you put around your, your tummy area where your ostomy is, it helps disguise. They have I've intimate way fashion wear. bags. I've seen yes, fashion yeah. bags for your they ostomies. Have, um, yeah, ostomy covers. That's what they call them. And some ostomists, they're making their own ostomy covers, you know? And so they have so much now for us. And I'm telling you, it, it definitely, definitely has changed over the years, which is great because we're looking even because I've had my ostomy for so, so long, you know, I'm, I'll try a sample. <laughs> and I'll, you know, I'll pretty much try it out. I pretty much have used the same ostomy bags for a long time. But, hey, there's nothing wrong with, hey, let me try a sample. Let me see how that works, because, you know, I'm a model. And so I just like to try different things and see how it would help if I'm taking a photo shoot or if I'm, you know, have a runway show or whatever, you know, yeah. I want to be, I want to disguise it. But even though I'm, I'm tall and I'm slim, you know, but <laughs> I don't mind trying new things that come out. I definitely, definitely don't mind. Yeah. But, so it has changed <laughs> over the years. <laughs> and it sounds like for the better too, just oh, definitely. have more options. Yeah. yeah, definitely for the better because remember, we're, you know, we're all different. We're different sizes. We're different weight. We're different heights. Uh, sometimes our ostomies are lower. Sometimes they're higher. So with all these different products and supply companies out there, it's something out there for everybody. You know, it's just finding what is best for you and, and your your ask me and even maybe your lifestyle. And so again, there's there's so much, so much out there to choose from. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And so what urged you to go into modeling? Well, Rebecca in the mall shopping for clothes. <laughs> And I really, honestly, I was in a mall shopping and a modeling scout came to me and, you know, say, hey, we have a local modeling company that's having an open house. Would you like to come? And I'm and I'm thinking uh, I didn't say to him, but I'm thinking modeling and ostomy bags. You now that ain't going together. <laughs> You know, at the time, that's what I was thinking. But I was very, very familiar with the ostomy company. It's well known here in my city. And and so I was like, OK, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to listen, though. <laughs> I'm just going to listen to what they had to say. You know, of course, they talked about, you know, modeling, all the wonderful things, making money, traveling, well, teaching you how to model. And honestly, still that day when I went, I, it still wasn't on my mind to say yes. I just went to to listen. But I was still thinking, Rebecca, like modeling and having two ostomy bags. Now, how is that going to work? But what I decided to do was I decided to step out on faith and I decided to do something that I never did before. Decide to say, hey, well, let me try this hobby because at the time it was a hobby. (laughs) So I decided to do it. And again, I go back to I wanted to do something else with my life besides thinking about my ostomies all the time. So I said, okay, let me just try it. Just try. (laughs) And I started classes because I didn't, 
I didn't know how to model, <laughs> you know. I didn't grow up again wanting to be a model. I did like clothes and I did like fashions, but modeling was not on my mind. And I went every Saturday to start classes with this modeling company, teaching me how to model, pose and all types of things. But what happened was I liked it and it turned into a passion and I started progressing in class. <laughs> Like, I'm like, oh, okay. And my instructor, you know, I was doing so well that my instructor was like, well, we're going to start putting you in showcases. We're going to start putting you in some fashion events. And I'm thinking, oh, goodness, what modeling, what model comes into the industry? And it's like, oh, I can't wear this and I can't wear that. You know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm scared now. But one thing, and my instructor didn't know initially anything yeah. about my bags. I, I didn't want, I didn't want to tell him because I didn't want that to be the focus or whatever. But one thing he said to me, and this is before he even knew, he was like, he was like, Geraldine, your talent speaks for itself. So, you know, this is why I'm deciding to put you out there more, put you in some showcases and, and get you out there. You're doing so well. And that was like a boost that really, it did help my self-esteem because I was starting to feel good about myself. I was, again, taking the focus off my ostomies, doing something that now I enjoyed. And of course, I fell in love more with fashion and modeling. And I just really progressed and I did tell my instructor about my bags and he worked with me and I found little things to do, some tricks and some tips and all that kind of stuff. When you want to do something, you'll find a way to make it happen. And I just started wearing support garments to kind of keep my bags in place, not to make me look slimmer because I was already, you know, <laughs> tall, but just to kind of keep my bags in place and things like that. I was being more cautious, you know, making sure I uh, changed and drained my bag before a show or a photo shoot. I watched what I ate like the day of, you know, didn't overeat, didn't, you know what I mean? Kept hydrating yeah. just to, as a precaution. And so that worked for me. It still does. But I just, I started progressing and it just kind of went to another level. Now I'm all over billboards and magazines and all that kind of stuff, you know, because these, these people want to know who is this model <laughs> that has ostomy bags. And actually that's really how I pitch my story to different magazines and different media, you know, on, you know, it shows on my social media, I'm out, my bags are out, <laughs> you know, I'm showing them in, in so many different ways. Again, like I said, you know, I found a passion in life and I found something that I enjoyed and again, found something that really helped my, my self-esteem and my modeling career has been such a blessing and especially a blessing to other ostomates because you know now you know you can go on social media I have a couple of friends that are models that have ostomies and they're in magazines they're on fashion runways and we just want to show everybody that again we're more than our ostomies and we have dreams and passions in life I'm still modeling. I still love it. I'm it's still a passion of mine. And so, yeah, I'm, I, I'm glad that I went <laughs> and just listened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was my intent just to go and listen, but it turned into something else. Yeah. It really, really did. It turned to something, to something amazing. My modeling career is still, it's still going strong, I would say. <laughs> I've been watching on your social media. I know it is. <laughs> Did you ever feel any pushback at all from it, from anyone because of your ostomy bags in your modeling career? No, no, because you know what happened again, I have to go back to what my instructor said. He's like, your talent speaks for itself. I'm a great runway model. I'm a great print model. And I think what, what happens is you have to get to the point where you are happy with yourself, right? Because, and, and not just this industry, because the, the modeling industry, it is what it is, right? It's a, people are like, oh, it's a fickle business. They discriminate. Yes, they're all of that. But at the same time, you have to know who you are in this industry, whether you have an awesome bag or whether you don't. 
And you have to always say, listen, every closed door does not mean no, because you're going to get some no's, right? You're going to get some no's in this industry and that's okay and that's fine. But I know who I am being a model with ostomy bags. So I can really, really say, and I've been very, very blessed that I, I have not gotten any pushback because now I'm letting people know. I'm, I'm letting these designers know or these stylists know or before I start a photo shoot and I've worked with some wonderful photographers and I'm not afraid to say, hey, listen, I have ostomy bags. Listen, I might have to run to the bathroom before we get started. If you don't mind, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that anymore. And so I think if you're up front, <laughs> then, you know, they might understand better, but maybe some people don't. And that's OK, because at that point in time, so, you know, education is important. You have to educate people because people don't. What is an ostomy? What is ostomy surgery? You know, even designers like, well, can you wear this or can you? wear? I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Good. I'm good. Yes. <laughs> Let's try it on. <laughs> So a part of that pushback is really knowing who you are as an ostomate, as a person. And so, again, you might get some no's, but that's just that could be a regular model, not just because I'm a model with an ostomy. That could be any model that may get some pushback. But I want to say I, I haven't gotten any pushback because of I have ostomies, again, which is a blessing. I'm more comfortable with me. I love myself from the inside out. If they say no, the next person can say yes. And so I think it's kind of also your mentality and your mind still thinking positive, you know, if you get that no. So I decided to just go to the next door and open that door and go to the next door. My mind has changed so much with my ostomy journey. Very grateful, very, very grateful. Not saying that I don't get disappointed because you do. And that's OK, but I, I'm not going I'm not going to mope. I'm not going to uh, no. uh, get myself 24 hours. OK, you're over it. Let's go on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's move on, girl. <laughs> oh, I love your positivity. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good because I remember at one time I wasn't that way. I wasn't just, I wasn't so positive, but I kept a lot of it inside. And so, you know, people say, oh, you're so joyful. You're so, listen, doctors didn't think I was going to live. And so it's 50 some years later, I have a lot to be thankful for. And so I try to keep, you know, keep that positive mindset and positive attitude because Rebecca, we've been in two, two and a half years of COVID and just life happening around us. And so I'm just thankful, really, really honestly, just thankful for my life. And so, yeah, we have not so good days and that's OK. That's fine. That's life. You know, our emotions change every day. But overall, I just try to keep a positive outlook on life, things, people, places and things around me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, my last question is, how does it feel to represent aspiring models who may also be facing illnesses and diseases? Because you're representing such a huge community and it's oh so inspiring. God. And it's so weird because back then I didn't know how large the ostomy community was. I really, really did not realize. And this is this is kind of weird, too. So probably like a month ago or something, because if you Google my name, all types of things will come up. So my name came up with a celebrity who has an ostomy. I'm like, me? Uh, I mean, are they are they talking about me? <laughs> you know, and so I'm known for a celebrity. They call me a celebrity, you know, because I was just looking up celebrities who had ostomies because I wanted to know if anybody famous had an ostomy. And of course, yeah, there were a few some older ones, but uh, my name came up and some other ones too, other ostomies. I'm like, wow, I'm in the number. <laughs> <laughs> And so to answer your question, just being that inspiration for this ostomy community and just, again, just being a voice, bringing inspiration and motivation and empowerment to the ostomy community by sharing my story, which it, it's it really, honestly, it feels great. I feel blessed. I feel great and thankful. And so, you know, my journey doesn't stop. It continues. And I just hope that I continue 
to inspire other Austinians, you know, to share their journey or just to know that their life is not over because they have an ostomy. Prayerfully on next year, we will see, but I think it's going to happen. I'll be going to South Africa uh, next year in October. And so just to spread my story and journey worldwide, hopefully, you know, visiting some hospitals and ostomies, ostomates and doing some sem- a seminar or workshop there. You know, I'm just amazed also of how God is blessing me and my life has a purpose. My story has a purpose. And again, we there's some wonderful, wonderful estimates out there. And it's just a joy that, again, that we can share together and that we can grow this ostomy community and be there for one another. So I'm just happy to be a part. I'm, I'm happy to be in the number. I'm happy to share and to bring motivation and inspiration. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing to me and I hope it's a blessing to others as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing. It was so lovely to chat with you. Yeah, it's it's definitely a blessing. So, I mean, I really, really thank you for the opportunity. And honestly, mostly I thank you for having a platform like this. I read your story and I think it's wonderful. And I think it's going to help change lives. My story is, has helped change lives and your story and other people has other stories, their journey to share. And I think it's just amazing because one thing I found with telling my journey is like, you never know, you never know who needs to hear it. You can really help that person. And, you know, I just found that to be, that's one thing that keeps me going. It really does as far as, you know, sharing that you're making a difference for other people. And like I said, I'm different to make a difference. We are, everybody is different and and hopefully you're making a difference in in this world. (laughs) Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think there was a while where I didn't feel like I was really getting anywhere with this. And then I had someone reach out to me on social media and thank me for having it because she had just given birth to a baby girl with bladder extra fee. And I was like, that made it all worth it. (laughs) Wow. See, all worth it. It is. And like I said, you never know who's listening to your podcast. You you just don't know. And so you're being that voice, too, by having this platform. It just open. It just open more doors for you and others to just listen. And uh, sometimes people just want to listen. Mm-hmm. They don't talk down what you know what I mean because they don't they they're not ready to share but if they can listen to your podcast and listen to these other people's story that would probably just make their day we don't know so I think it's important to have a platform like this yeah I mean and just to show that we're still positive human beings that have life mm-hmm. going for them so yes. Yes. it's possible to have a good happy life mm-hmm. and still have some medical problems yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's wonderful and I do want to tell the viewers uh listeners I would say probably about two weeks ago I had my documentary come out it's called pieces of me and you can actually go on YouTube you'll see it <laughs> that will also be linked in the show notes Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Body Talk with Bex. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts at. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also consider becoming a patron on patreon.com. If you would like to share your story or know someone who does, I can be contacted through my website, www.bodytalkwithbex.com or on social media. And for anyone who wanted any of those sources that were cited or want to go check out her documentary, all of those will be linked in the episode notes. Thanks for listening.